Welcome back to Fraser Focus. Animal assisted therapy uses animals to help increase cognitive and emotional functions in humans. There's been a rise in these animal programs across British Columbia. Hey Badge. Hey Chase. Sally stands for Semi Amu Animal League Incorporated. We're a nonprofit registered Canadian charity. And um, we're all about the human animal bond. Everything we do is about people and animals together. There's a purpose to us rescuing the animals. We're going to provide them with their forever home. We're going to take really good care of them. But their job is to um, be therapists for at risk children who are struggling. I think that there's a lot to be said for that animal human connection and I think we're doing a lot of good work here with the kids teaching them how to care for the animals. People are turning to more alternative therapies rather than medication, that type of stuff. They're, they're looking for other things where they think that they can help and make a difference. I think the real issue is that there are people who are questioning how well does it work, right? And so uh, what we know is there's a plethora of burgeoning sort of uh, animal therapy scene with lots and lots of programs emerging. And we now see dogs in schools for helping reluctant readers in courtrooms to help you know, children giving testimony on sensitive topics uh, and in airports. So we're seeing them pop up. And the real question on the table is to what extent do they work? And the work that we do here at the uh, BARC program at UBC Okanagan is we look at uh, the impact of therapy dogs on student well-being. The kids are at first afraid of him. Uh, they've never been around a rooster before. And it takes them a bit, but once they um, hold Louise, they are smitten. St. John's Ambulance recently launched their Pause for Stories program, which sees dogs in libraries and schools across the region. There's something about animals, particularly dogs, mm -hmm. that um, connect people. Oh, Bonnie wants to come and say hi. She recognizes some new people. Shall we go and say hi? <laughs> and how are you? For the kids that have a hard time controlling their emotions, it allows them an opportunity to connect to an animal that doesn't judge them, doesn't uh, have any preconceptions, and it's just there where they can read the story, they pet the dog. Mm -hmm. You can just see all of a sudden their body just begin oh. to relax. I can see the therapy at work here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely relaxing. Oh, Bonnie wants to help you read. <laughs> Turn your head. What is it about the dog therapy that seems to work? What do you think it is personally? I think it's peaceful. The kids just feel comfortable and calm. Um, kids that were scared of dogs before are just settled and peaceful as soon as they meet Bonnie. Great. Good job, Isaac. It helps me uh, or anyone else. It helps you stay calm or it helps you with your reading. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the bonding between humans and animals, that's sort of a flourishing uh, area and people are increasingly identifying uh, dogs in particular and cats or pets in general as family members. I think if you look across the literature, people are saying uh, it's great these programs are out there, but uh, where's the evidence that they work? And you just can't have, oh, the dog made me feel good. We're partnered with the Surrey School District we are really going to be able to track the kids that are coming through our program and to really see um, what's happening with them year after year. Although there remains a lack of data and proof, I can certainly say that there's nothing wrong with a fuzzy therapist. You're watching Fraser Focus, more local stories when we come back.